Good afternoon all. Uh, we are going to start about the lecture on the birth defects, also called as congenital anomalies, congenital malformation. So what are these? These are basically structural, behavioral, functional and metabolic disorders that are present at birth. It can be major structural anomalies that occur in about 2 to 3 percent of the life born infants and which can be recognized in children by the age of 5 years. Birth defects are the leading cause of infant mortality in about 21% of infant death. You have minor anomalies that occur in about 15% of the newborn cases. For example, you can see here uh, defect with related to the ears, which is called as small ears, in some cases associated with major defects. So, the minor anomalies by themselves are not detrimental. In some cases, when these are associated with one major defect, for example, infant with one minor anomaly have 3% chance of having a major malformation. Those with two minor anomalies have a 10% chance and those with three minor anomalies have 20% chance. So they serve as a clue for diagnosing more serious underlying defect particularly the ear anomalies are indicators of other defect and it has been found that uh, they, they give us a sound uh, identification of those anomalies which are hidden like for example cardiac anomalies. It, it was usually found that way, right? Let us move on to the next slide. Now, let us now move on to the various types of abnormalities that can be. We categorize them under various, one is malformation. They occur during the formation of structures, that is, during the period of organogenesis, which is from the third to eighth week of gestation, wherein all the major parts of the organs are, by and large, they are formed. So this morphological defect of an organ or a part of organ or a larger region of the body that results intrinsically due to abnormal developmental process. And they are usually by, uh, the main cause is by the genetical or environmental factors. Various abnormalities. Uh, in one of the slides, you can see um, you can see anencephaly. You can see spina bifida, and there in the fingers you have additional finger there. So these are all the type of anomalies. These are malformation that was during the process of development when the organs and tissues were laid down. The defect occurred then, and that lead to the problem of malformed structures that were formed during this period of time. Various abnormalities that are uh, seen here. In one of the slides you can see anencephaly, where the brain is, uh, the central nervous system part is not developed. Another is the uh, spina bifida. Here in one of the slides you can see picture. You can see there is an additional digit. So this is how the, during the process of formation of the organs and the tissues which are being laid down, there is some defective uh, interception, maybe environmental or maybe due to the genetic factor. Second variety of abnormalities uh, is classified as disruption, which is a morphological defect of an already formed organ, part of an organ or a larger region of the body. Now, already the organ is formed, and maybe because of the exposure to teratogens or an interference with an originally normal developmental process that has led to a disruption. So here I can give an example of umbilical uh, band. One of the condition that has seen, we will show you in the next slide how it formed. A disruption is amniotic band sequence which is a syndrome, a broad term for a group of congenital abnormalities that occur when a band of an amnion uh, the inner lining of the amniotic sac, peel away from the sac and attach or wrap around the parts of the baby's body, disrupting the normal function. Here it has already caused uh, amputation of the foot. So this is one of the examples of disruption. Gastroschisis uh, is another example of uh, disruption wherein is a birth defect that develops in the baby uh, where the opening forms in the baby's abdominal wall 
and the baby's ball pushes out through this hole and that it develops outside the baby's body in the amniotic fluid. So this is another example of disruption. And you can see here there is a partial a disruption of the abdominal wall in the area supplied by the right omphalomesentric artery. There's an opening there which you can see in the picture over here. Uh, you can see here uh, that there is a closure of the defect in the gastroschisis where the bowel was out and it has been closed. Uh, the third variety of congenital anomaly is deformations. Uh, deformation is an abnormal form, shape or position of the body that results from mechanical forces. Here we have shown you in the picture uh, clough fit, which is also called as equinovirus, which is due to caused due to the compression in the amniotic cavity. Mm. We have mentioned you a term that is oligohydromnia, is where the level of the amniotic fluid is decreased below 400 ml. So that time you know the function of the amniotic fluid. It helps allow the movement of the fetus. Now in this case there is no, not much fluid. So that has led to mechanical forces of uh, the body parts on each other and that has resulted into the cleft fit here, which is correctable nowadays. Dysplasia, you already know, a cell undergoes various modification, various method of adaptation, starting from Metaplasia, then dysplasia, anaplasia, and neoplasia. Dysplasia is abnormal organization of the cells into tissue and its morphological results. Abnormal tissue formation. So that is dysplasia. Uh, what is about the syndrome? Syndrome are the group of anomalies occurring during with a specific common etiology. And they can be made with the diagnosis can be made with risk or occurrence of the known. For example, here, vectoral syndrome. Each letter stands uh, for particular anomaly, like vertebral anomaly for V, anal, cardiac, tracheoesophageal, tracheoesophageal, renal and limb defect, limb defect. Sorry. So all this together, uh, they give rise to a syndrome. So the causes of one major cause, around 50 to 60 percent, is unknown etiology. Second is the genetic factors, chromosomal abrasions, mutant genes falling into that range, environmental factors, uh, which are around 7 to 10 percent, and multifactorial, both genetic and environmental together, are around 20 to 25 percent. So these are the main causes of the congenital anomalies. Uh, the causes for the anomalies resulting due to genetic abnormalities can be classified as due to numerical abnormalities of the chromosome, structural abnormalities of the chromosome, or due to the mutant gene. Uh, you are all aware of uh, the, this uh, about the Down syndrome, wherein there is a trisomy 21. There is an extra chromosome at number 21. Monosomy, that is, it has one absence. So, classical example of monosomy in sex chromosome is Turner syndrome, where she is a female having 45 XO. And uh, in the Klein filter syndrome, you have XXY, who is a male having a female character. Structural uh, anomalies are translocation and inversion, where the the sequencing of the DNA on the chromosome is inversed and in one of the condition it is translocated it is so these are due to the structural abnormalities anomalies due to mutant gene may involve loss or change in the function of the gene you you must be aware of various types of mutation that can occur it can be 
point mutation, it can be silent mut mutation. So when there is a mutation, it changes the genetic coding and that particular protein for which the genes are coded will be abnormal leading into a disease. So it can increase by number of environmental factors, for example, large doses of radiation. And to the extent that we are being exposed to so many chemicals around and every now and then our genes are getting mutated and that's why we get so many diseases nowadays. So what are teratogens? Any agent that can produce congenital anomaly or increase the incidence of anomaly in the population may be because of infection, drugs, chemicals. All these are now grouped under one which are now called as teratogens. So what infective agents can be teratogen? Infections with viruses like rubella, cytomegalovirus, herpes, varicella virus, protozoa like toxoplasmosis, bacteria like syphilis, can all give rise to congenital abnormality. You can see in this slide, all these viruses are capable of giving congenital malformation in one of the other organ. You can see the rubella virus giving rise to cataract, glaucoma, cytomegalovirus, microencephaly, herpes, varicella virus, lymph hypophlasia, toxoplasmosis, hydrocephalus, syphilis, mental retardation, so these are the infective agents that can cause congenital malformations if affected a pregnant lady. We are all aware of how radiation can affect. We know about Hiroshima, uh, Hiroshima Nagasaki, Chernobyl. Uh, the dose of radiation, the duration of exposure, and the stage of development of the constructors at the time of exposure plays an important role on the, uh, to the extent how it can cause uh, congenital defect and they are as we have mentioned here the example of Hiroshima Nagasaki and uh, so radiation is an important source of potent teratogen producing birth defect this slide gives you various drugs that have to be avoided to a pregnant lady and which are known teratogens that can lead to in uh, 1960s it was found out that the children were born with birth uh, limb defects and they found that this drug called as thalidomide it crosses the placenta and that is how it causes birth defect so it is these drugs are known teratogens known drugs that will cause uh, congenital amenolis and these should be avoided during the pregnancy. Certain hormones are also capable of causing congenital abnormalities. So androgenic agents like masculinization of the female genitalia, uh, diethyl stilvesterol can cause uterine malformation, maternal diabetes, is known to cause neural tube defects, maternal obesity also known to cause neural tube defects. And last but not the least, a pregnant lady should avoid consuming alcohol, cigarette smoking, and drugs. So they are known uh, agents that can lead to congenital abnormalities. You can see in the picture here, there is a cleft lip and cleft palate uh, fetal alcohol syndrome, you can see. Uh, though cleft lip and cleft palate is now surgically, we can correct it, but it can, the alcohol, the cigarette smoking can lead to cause various other malformations which are not corrected. So it can lead to a permanent damage to the fetus. So uh, I think you all have understood and it brings us into the insight of how the period of development, particularly the embryogenic period that is from three to eight months of the pregnant lady is so important. And uh, during this time, she should not be exposed to all of these teratogens, which are known uh, that can cause congenital malformation. So thank you.